Hello, welcome to Spanish Lessons with Dr. Alan Davison. The videos in this series are designed to be used with the Blurzo el Burro graded Spanish reader. The reader is available at Amazon.com or through my website at Blurzo.com. Have fun! Today we're going to look at Spanish pronunciation. There are two basic rules when trying to figure out how to pronounce a word in Spanish. If the word ends in a vowel, N or S, the stress in that word falls on the second to last syllable. If the word ends in some other consonant other than N or S, the stress falls on the last syllable. Accents break rules one and two, which is to say that when the Spanish grammar was written based on how people were speaking the language, the first grammar was published in 1492 by a man named Antonio Nebrija. And he tried to come up with a series of rules uh, that could be used to describe how people were using the language. And what he discovered was that when, the word, when a word ended in a vowel, N or S, most of the time, the stress in that word was on the second to last syllable. When it ended in something other than a vowel, N or S, the stress was on the last syllable. However, there were a few words that didn't fit rules one and two, so he had to come up with a way to render that in the written language. And what he decided to do was put a written accent over the syllable that received the stress when it didn't fit rules one or two. Okay, we're talking here about syllables, so we need to figure out exactly what constitutes a syllable in Spanish. Basically, we're talking about beats, how many beats a word has. In Spanish, we have strong vowels, and we have weak vowels. Okay. The strong vowels are a, e, o, and the weak vowels are u and e. Okay. Okay. A strong vowel always uh, will be at uh, one syllable. So, if you, for example, if you have a word in which you have a strong vowel right next to another strong vowel, that would be two syllables. Each strong vowel would receive one beat. Boom, boom. Okay? If, uh, on the other hand, you have a strong vowel right next to a weak vowel, let's say you had an A ah and an uh, E together, that would only be one syllable. Okay? This is called a diphthong. I believe that's how you spell it. It's a little bit strange in, uh, in English. Much easier to spell diptongo in Spanish. Uh, likewise, if you have, let's say, a weak vowel right next to a strong vowel within a word, that is, let's say you had a uh, u, e, that also would be only one syllable. That would also be a diphthong. Or if you had two weak vowels right next to each other, one syllable. Or if you had, in some cases, strong, weak, weak, all next to each other, that is also only one syllable. Those are diphthongs. That is, two or more vowels that create only one syllable. Okay. <clears throat> Let's erase uh, all of this. You can come back to it uh, by simply going back on the video if you need to refer to it again. So let's take some different words. Uh, let's take the word casa. Okay, this has uh, two strong vowels, a, a, and, and therefore two syllables, casa. Each, uh, each strong vowel receives uh, one full uh, stress. Okay, now the key to knowing if it needs a written accent is, of course, knowing how the word is pronounced. And I will give you the proper pronunciation, and you tell me if it needs a written accent. This word is pronounced casa. Casa. One more time. Casa. Okay, so where's the stress? Is it here? Casa? Or is it here? Casa. Casa? Casa. Okay. It is, of course, casa. So we can uh, eliminate... This second line. Okay. So, once again, casa. Casa. Now, does this word fit our rules? It ends in a vowel, ends in the a, ah, 
So it should fit rule number one. If it ends in a vowel, N or S, the stress should be on the second to last syllable. This is the last syllable, and this is the second to last syllable. So it does uh, fall where it should fall. Casa. In that case, it does not need a written accent. Okay? Let's try another one. Let's try the word... What word should we try? How about papel? Papel. 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 Where's the stress? Is it papel or papel? Papel? Papel. It is, of course, papel. Papel. Stress is here. Okay? So, does this fit our rules? Let's take another look at our rules here. Uh, in this case, uh, this word ends in something other than a vowel N or S. It ends in some other consonant. So this, the stress should be on the last syllable, and that's where it is. Papel. Papel. So it fits rule number two. Therefore, it does not need a written accent. Okay, let's try one more. Let's try... How about... Um, okay, this word means a uh, hummingbird. It's pronounced colibri. 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 Where is the stress? Is it here? Colibri? Is it here? Colibri? Or is it here? Colibri. Listen to the proper pronunciation again. Colibri. 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 Proper stress is here. Okay, but this says if it... Uh, our rule says if it ends in a vowel N or S, stress should be on the second to last syllable. It should be here. But it is here. So what do we do? Because the proper pronunciation is colibri, what we have to do is, of course, we have to put a written accent on that I, colibri, because it doesn't fit rules one and two. Okay, let's try one more example here. Try an example that has one of those diphthongs in it. That is two uh, vowels that make only uh, one syllable. For example, let's take the word lección. Lección. Okay, here we have the weak I and the strong O, so this is only one syllable. Okay, lección. 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 Now our rule says that but it ends in a vowel N or S, and this ends in an N that the stress should be on the second to last syllable. But the stress is on the last syllable. Lexion. Lexion. Okay, it's not lexion, it's lexion. Okay? So, what do we have to do to make this sound the way that we know it's supposed to sound? We have to put a written accent on it. Now, do we put the written accent on the I or on the O? Well, let's see what would happen if we did uh, either one. If we put it on the I, what do you think would happen? put it on the I, that suddenly turns that weak vowel into a strong vowel, and now we have a three-syllable word. Lexion. Lexion. We don't want lexion. We want lexion. We want this diphthong to sound only as one syllable. So what do we do? We take that accent off the I, and we put it on the O. Lexion. Lexion. Okay, now it uh, is pronounced properly. And this written accent shows that it didn't fit these rules one or two, so we had to put the written accent on. Okay, uh, that's enough for this first part of the Spanish pronunciation. Uh, this will be continued in a, in a, a second uh, video, so just go to uh, video B for the Spanish uh, pronunciation, and we'll continue our lesson.